What is happening, YouTube? Larry Keaton here representing Formula Golf. Today's video is about how to improve your mental game using the method, the mental scorecard. Many of you might have already heard about this. Many of you probably don't apply it, but it's something that has become an absolute focal point of my daily game. How it works is there's three things. You got your pre-shot routine, you have the way you envision your golf shot, and then committing to the swing that helps you execute that golf shot. If one of those three facets is off, then you do not get a point for your mental scorecard. So say you play in a par four, normally it takes four shots for a normal par. Uh, if you committed to three of four of those, you got 75% on that hole. After 18 holes, you add them all up, find your percentage, and you can compare it with the tour pros who average above 90%. The best in the world average 95 to 98% and Tiger Woods in his prime averaged 100%. And they say that every 8% is a full stroke. So it's really important that to try to get yourself up to a higher level for the mental scorecard. Right now, since I started it, it when I started off, it was 75%. I built it up, I averaged around 82%. And uh, I, my goal is by the end of the year is to average more than 92%. So it's starting off, uh, it started off about a couple weeks ago. This upcoming video was filmed last week and uh, it, it worked out pretty well in this up upcoming video. But it's something that has drastically changed my game and I highly recommend it. Also, one more thing. Last month I was able to save up some money and play in some golf tournaments. One of them was the Safeway Classic pre-qualifier. I shot 69 with 92% uh, mental scorecard and made it through. But then I go to the Monday qualifier, didn't play, didn't putt as well. I shot 78 with 83% mental scorecard and didn't make it. But since I gambled on myself to go play in that Monday qualifier, it took away a lot of funds towards my travel expenses for my next tournament, which is the Monterey Open October 15th through 18th. So below me is a link to a GoFundMe site. If you can find it in your hearts and more importantly, your budget to donate, anything will help me out a lot. I would really like to be able to properly prepare for this upcoming tournament and not have finances get in the way of performing really well. And what I'll be doing when I go up there, I wanna play two practice rounds. I'll be filming both practice rounds and also plan on staying with a couple other pros at an Airbnb. So we'll film like kind of like a little bit of a daily life vlog of you know how pros travel and play golf and you know for tournaments and kind of spend their time in between the rounds it's up in monterey so there's gonna be a lot of cool videos a lot of cool shots so again click on the link below any help would be fantastic until then everybody enjoy this next video I got exactly 100 yards. I'm gonna hit a 56 degree and uh, really just hit it just above three quarters here to get the distance right. Landed perfect, but it spun off. Ooh, I got my. Okay. So I got a basic little chip here. Short game, especially out of everything, is what I've been grinding on. Well, short game chipping and putting. So uh, I'm pretty confident with my my chips right now. I got to carry this thing on the green just a couple feet, and it's all about just landing it on my my target land spot here and see if it. by a little bit but it'll be a kick in par. Right. So this nine holes that we're going to be filming today is entirely based on my mental scorecard more than anything. It's my routine, how well I commit, and this is a perfect hole to see it. If, if you look out in the distance there's a rock up there. That's uh, just right of that is my line of the green. It's a 290 yard carry. If I go left of those rocks it's OB and I'm reteeing. So this is a perfect kind of hole where you really need to commit to your line and trust what you're doing. So go through my routine here, which is just two swings of uh, something that I'm working on. I'm still working on getting a big old turn and a lot more uh, wrist, wrist break to get close to parallel as I can. And it's working so far. That 
is literally exactly where I was aiming. So we'll find out how close it is to the green. Here's my divot. So I came from over these trees here, and I mean, I could probably couldn't have landed this in a better spot. I was going right at the pin. And if you look, it rolled through the green. On the scorecard, it says this hole is 385 yards, but from where I tee off from it, if you cut it over the canyon, from where my ball carried, it was probably about a 290 yard carry. It's uphill, but it's downwind. So this is a tricky little shot, another one that is really important that I commit to. I have a lot of break going right to left here, and I gotta really have good uh, contact and good spin on it to have this thing start trickling, so. spin on it more than I even expected but I think I can handle that it's about a two feet and there's a birdie so here we are after two holes uh, right here on the bottom is my mental scorecard the first hole uh, a group let us go in front of them so I was kind of rushing the tee shot a little bit and I, I didn't really take my full time and commit to the shot. I hit a really mediocre or terrible kind of shot. It caught the fairway just fine. So three for four in the first hole. Second hole, I hit all three exact, and I committed to every single one of them. So just like that, as a birdie, I hit two fairways, one green and two one putts so far. So here we go, hole three here, uh, long par four, 446 yards. Uh, it's a big drop down the hill, but it's a pretty wide fairway if you look over that way. It's a really cool hole. You've seen this hole on the last on a couple videos, I believe. I'm gonna hit my driver here. With wide fairways, it's even more important to to narrow your target line on a on something small. Like I'm picking the cart sign that's way out there, and I'm gonna fade it off of that. I might have hit the ground before that one, but that's going to be fine. Heading down the right side of the fairway. I, am. I got 139 yards. It's a back pin. Caught the, just the right edge of the rough here. Uh, this is Bermuda grass, so you can catch jumpers, but I, I don't have any grass behind my ball. So I'm going to chip a nine iron, kind of flight it. Make sure I get all the way back there. I'm a little into the wind and a little, uh, coming a little across left to right. About pin high left. It just didn't cut because the ball was above my feet. But oh no, that's not too bad. That's probably about a uh, 15 feet. Putting more than anything is what I've been trying to commit on the most. Uh, I do a lot of drills in my practice now, and uh, putting has become a lot easier. Committed to that stroke and hit it right on my line. Nice two birdies in a row there. Okay. All right, we have a 193 yard par three. It's downhill, but the wind is partially in and from right to left. That pin is tucked to the left. So if you get one cooking, it's gonna go in the hazard. So I'm gonna pick my land spot more so in the middle of the green, probably just left of where this, this back bunker, which is probably about 30 feet right of the hole and draw it off of that. And then I think that'll give me a little bit of leeway to, uh, if I happen to overdo it, it'll be just fine. So, should be a stock seven iron here. Turning just right of the pin looks really good. Yeah, it's about a. Uh, 
14 feet, that was a good shot. Got about 15 feet here. Tricky little putt, this green's always hard to putt on because it, it's, so, it's a lot of subtle breaks, so I'm playing this one right edge. I'm hoping it doesn't break off of that. Par though, take it on this hole. Ugh. That'll work. Alright, so unfortunately, I'm six inches off of the fairway, which is kind of a bummer, but it might actually help me in this one. I Hazard. So my new two iron, I want to give a special thanks to Chandler Carr from the Creations Department of TaylorMade. He uh, actually watched some of my videos and he knows my uh, boss, Bucky, from testing and offered to help me out with a shaft. He knew I needed one really bad, so he uh, shaved down the tip. It's a hybrid shaft, so it'll fit uh, my two iron, and I freaking love this thing. So special thanks to Chandler for uh, hooking up. I'm going to have his Instagram down on the bottom if you guys want to give a follow and then uh, my boss from Taylor made Bucky Co. for building it up for me. So this is a, a pretty tough shot. I just, you just can't really go left. But I haven't really been hitting this thing left other than that first tee shot. So let's make sure I rotate this one. really a bailout as much as it was just not a good swing. I was a little off balance, but that's not a bad spot. Got about a 20 yard pitch here. Uh, I got a little bunker to traverse and there's a downhill slope there. So I'm actually going to try to uh, have a little bit of trajectory on this one. And let it just dribble to the hole. there. So even on these one footers, I mean, these count towards your commitment. Like, I don't want to just walk up and nonchalantly brush them in. I've had tournaments in my life where I've missed putts, maybe not this short, but just uh, outside of this thing. But, you know, I won't go through the full routine, but I'll definitely commit to the stroke. Make sure I just pour these things in. All right. Another birdie. I have 107 yards here, uphill into the wind, and the pin is in a back shelf. Uh, it's a really easy for you to land it short and then spin it off that shelf and leave yourself with a 40 footer. So I'm going to take one club extra that I, that I normally would. So I got a 52 degree here. I'm going to try to flight this thing. And to the back of the green is, is 113. So I'm basically aiming for that yardage or, or playing a little bit past that yardage and let the wind land it a little bit past. And that way if it spins it'll get to the it won't go all the way off. Uh, yeah that wasn't a see there. It's on the right level but I don't think I really committed to that swing. It, so that'll be a, a dock off there. Not bad speed. It took off left in the beginning. 
and uh, it didn't break as much right as I thought it would at the end. We'll take a par. 432 yard par four. Slight dog leg right, everything funnels to the left. yards into this hole dead downwind so I'm gonna actually I'm actually gonna hit a gap wedge here and hit it nice and high make sure the wind takes it see footprints and divots and all these kind of stuff in your mind, it's easy to get discouraged with your putt thinking you don't, you know, it's really going to affect your putt, but I've I found lately that all of these marks on the green are just something for me to ignore and just focus on my, on my routine, and the line that I make, and if I hit the perfect putt, nothing I can do about it, but in my head, I committed that everything scorecard is to when you commit to every single shot you're gonna hit bad shots it's just how golf is but I don't ever want to hit another bad shot because I wasn't committed so if I can live my entire life and keep doing that I imagine I'll still I'll play pretty well you know pretty consistently. Par 3 here 230 yards the laser says 220 though it's slightly uphill slightly into the wind so I'm gonna hit a four iron and just uh, try to hit a soft draw Heading down the left. There's a hill there, it'll should spit it. I'll be scrambling on this hole. This is this is a prime example of when you don't commit on a swing and you end up in a terrible spot. I mean, literally, I, I didn't didn't commit on on rotating, so I threw at it and hit an ugly little hook. And so now I have a downhill slope. The green's going away from me out of Bermuda. So really gotta try to grind on this one. Got to keep the speed up. A lot of times it's hard to commit to really keeping the speed up in Bermuda grass. Well, it got a lot of spin on it, but not not too great. That's about a 13 footer. Got a heavy breaker here up the hill pick up speed as it breaks. Oh, I didn't hit it. I had it on my line, just didn't hit it hard enough. So that's a bowie that stemmed from, you know, one non-committed four iron. And just like that, you drop a shot. You live and learn. Right, 542 yard par five. The wind is coming right to left. I'm gonna try to hit kind of like a hold off cut into it. It'll still probably turn to the left though. 
There's like a white steak way down there, and I'll be eating just right of that. Actually bounced in the bunker and then rolled out. The bunker is right around 300 yards, right in my way. But I think I got lucky. I actually, get through the bunker. I hit the lip and then rolled all the way back down. 222 yards away. I can't get there, so I gotta just lay up. I have to get over water here. I'm gonna take a relatively aggressive line. I have an eight iron in my hands, but I think in order for me to get to the yardage that I want, I gotta hit a seven. Probably hit this thing around 170. here 67 yards winds behind me the pins in the back we'll flight this thing a little bit really grinding on these uh, types of wedge shots so that looks pretty good Let's see if it got all the way back there uh, looks like the wedge, the wedge got pretty good, about four and a half feet. And then we put it straight up the hill. Four and a half feet. Every day I do the four foot drill where I have to make ten in a row, so I'm pretty used to these. Again, there's a lot of spike marks and damage in front of this thing, so I'm just going to commit to this stroke. All right, you guys, I shot 32 that side, which is solid. Four for seven fairway, seven for nine greens, and 12 putts, putting really well. I have 90.6% on the mental scorecard for this nine holes, which is a lot better than what I've normally been doing. Uh, but Phil Mickelson, who, tra who trained in the same process, said that he only, at his prime, he's only had one shot around where he's not committed, which is batting, you know, 98, 99%. So I still have work to do, a lot of room to improve. If you guys are ever struggling with your mental game, be sure to try this drill. Do it every round for the rest of your life, and you'll see some improvement here. So remember, everybody, keep on grinding.